Hello folks and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and let's try Chips Challenge 1 and 2. They are both developed by Niffler, or published by Nikidu. You can pick up Chips Challenge 1 for $1.99. You can pick up Chips Challenge 2 for $4.99. You can also get the Chips Challenge 2 editor for $2.99 or you can pick all of that up for $4.99. Yes, that is the same price as Chips Challenge 2. Yes, if you like what you see, you should almost certainly just buy the combo of both games together plus the editor. Chips Challenge 1 supports Steam achievements, trading cards, and cloud saves. Chips Challenge 2 supports co-op, local co-op, achievements, trading cards, and has a level editor. They are both Windows only, and I will be playing a review copy of both games that I was provided so that I can make this video. We'll be covering both games. I'm going to start with Chips Challenge 1 for obvious reasons. Uh, and then once we've played it a bit, I'll skip on over to Chips Challenge 2. They're very, very similar. So let's go ahead and hop into this. Some of you may have heard of this. Some of you may not have. We're going to skip the tra the story here. Basically, the idea is that you, you're trying to get into this club and you need to pick up these chips by, or you need to pass these tests by picking up these chips. And to pick the chips up, you have to beat these tile, tile puzzles. We're going to actually skip ahead a bit. Uh, you probably can't see what I'm doing, uh, but I'm going to skip over to lesson three. That's a little bit further in, so you can start to see some of the mechanics. Now, I move with WASD. I don't know if you can rebind that or not, uh, but I just naturally use it. Uh, if You might want to also move it to the keypads. There's not really too much keys as far as it goes. Escape or F1 will restart the level, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So again, as you can see, there's little chips that we need to get. Um, just to kind of cover the UI real fast, we see the level at the bottom, or level number three. You show our time left is ticking down at 75 seconds, and chips left at four. We need to get at least four chips before we can leave. We have to kind of open up this special lock uh, that can only be opened if we have enough chips. So we can't, uh, we can go over here in the ice. But we slide, we can't stop, so we can't, no point going there. Up here, and we drown. By the way, I love that bummer. This game originally was on Windows 3.1, which is kind of funny because I don't actually remember this. Apparently, it had a big cult following. Uh, I somehow missed this. In Windows 3.1 was my first Windows, so I'm not quite sure how I missed it. But uh, anyway, uh, fire. Bummer. Also bad. I love when he says bummer. I found that quite amusing. However, you can pick up pick up various boots. So I got these flippers. So now I can swim across here grab this chip and I can grab these ice boots so now I can walk on the ice grab this chip grab these boots so that I can walk on the fire and now conveniently within the fire we had the magnetic boots which lets me walk on this now normally this doesn't kill you it just pushes you along the route uh, don't stare too closely uh, because you will possibly go blind some stages with a lot of those kind of uh, floors together make my eyes go cross. So you see I unlock the, the like the microchip blocking the way because I had zero chips left otherwise it would not have disappeared. I'm ready to leave the level and it gives us a high score. I'm not sure how much of this you can see like I just got a pop-up window so that I got a new high score. Not sure if you can see that with the way I'm recording and I apologize for any weird uh, visual or audio issues uh, with them both being kind of older games. And I'll kind of talk about the story of the game a little bit here in a minute. Uh, it's it was a little tricky to upgrade or uh, to record. You can see if you click on or uh, walk on these little yellow balls, it will. Sorry about the mouse there. Uh, it'll tell you, you know, give you some hints. So basically, that's just saying this green button flips the block. So you can see where it's kind of got that green green like square when you hit this. That toggles. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and over here we've got blue blue uh, buttons which obviously makes these tanks go up and down touching the tanks will kill you i know i tried once just for the heck of it and as you progress uh, obviously these are very very simple puzzles to introduce you to the game to let you learn the mechanics in a kind of a slower pace i probably should have started a little bit further uh, blocks can also hide stuff oops they like to do things like that now let's talk about my number one complaints about this game no checkpoints now, typically, a lot of these beginning puzzles, it doesn't really matter. It's They're pretty small. Later on, though, and I'm not even that far into it, later on, it can take several minutes to set up, you know, to get to the point 
get where you're going, basically. And having to redo all that can be very, very grating to me. Uh, so it, that does get on my nerves, uh, especially there's one puzzle in particular. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it during this video, but there was one puzzle in particular that took a lot of setup, a lot of pushing and tapping and, you know, directions and doing all this. So, you know, the second time you go to do it, you kind of like, ah, all right, all right, I get it. So you're just kind of pushing and to get through it and then you die and you do the entire thing over again. And it can fall into that trap of, it kind of gets annoying. Okay, let's try to stop that as soon as humanly possible. You also cannot control volume, unfortunately. Uh, you can turn music and sound off, but you cannot turn off, uh, you, know, you can't control the volume. Keep in mind, these are very, well, Chips, Chip 1 is a very old game, and I'll just talk about Chip, uh, or Chip's Challenge 1 is a very old game. You'll notice that thing stopped firing. Basically, every time you hit this, that shoots out something. And that ball, now enemies obviously kill you when they hit you, but they can also trigger buttons, so you have to be careful with that. So we're going to actually try to keep him blocked over there, because remember the green blocks, or the green buttons trigger the green blocks, so... All right, good. All right, so bombs, don't want to touch, obviously. So we're gonna open that trap, send him over there. I think this will just make him, there we go. Suicide into there and wowza, first try. Thank you very much. Now this again shows you another mechanic where blue walls basically mean sometimes they'll disappear, sometimes nothing happens at all. And then sometimes invisible blocks can pop up like this. But yeah, you know, as I finish this stage, you know, this actually skip ahead a bit. Just one moment. You can also skip levels. I know, you, again, you probably can't see the menu, uh, but you can restart the level. You can uh, select the level that you've already beaten. You can pause the game and you can skip the level. So if you're getting frustrated, you can actually skip it, which I've actually done a few times because frankly, it was one of those, uh, basically I skip levels when I find that I am having to do it multiple times. Like if, um, like that level I was talking about before where it took me just a really long time to set it up and then I end up dying because I was just kind of getting into a hurry. Then I was just like, all right, let's just go. And I ended up skipping the level. So there's also teleport. Now the teleportation stuff is kind of cool. And this is where things are starting to come together a little bit here. Let me move the mouse out of the way again. The teleporters are interesting in that the direction you enter the teleport helps to determine where you're going to pop up. So I go up. In this case, I'm going to go up here. Now this block to the right of me here, when I go over it, it pops up and I can't get past it. So we don't want to go over there because then there's just fire and we'll die. So let's go down. Nope, that's not where I wanted to go. These, uh, this, like, the outlaw looking guy doesn't kill you, but he steals, I think he steals your items, if I recall correctly. So we get the fire shoes. So now we can go over here. Grab that. Ah, uh, okay. All right, I see I messed up already. So he's going to take my stuff. Well, now I still need to grab this chip that's over here. Actually, wait, there's nothing to grab over there. Oh, no, see, there's a chip on the conveyor belt up there. So I can't get it because I screwed up. So let's hit escape. So some of these are kind of a trial and error affair. It's not obvious at first what you do, or sometimes, as you saw before, sometimes I push a brick over and there's fire there. There's no way I could have known that. I don't think, I don't think you could see the fire. Um, if you could, then you have to be very careful. So anyway, what we want to do, we want to be able to, we don't want to, we only want to cross the outlaw with the item we just used. So for example, we want to grab this and we want to go back down. If I can remember how to get over there this way, I found like every way, but this way. Nope. There we go. Jeez Louise. All right. We're not going to grab the boot. So we're going to go through there again, that blocked off. And again, once you get on those green things, you can't really stop yourself. It just pushes you. So it pushes us over. It takes our, our, our fin, which is fine. We don't need it anymore. So now what we're going to do, 
go over here. Grab the fire boots. Go through the fire, grab this chip. Now we need one more chip, which we can just walk through here. Grab it. And now, unlock the chip, and boom, we're out. So you can see they're getting a little bit more complicated. Let's skip ahead a little bit. I know I said I was going to do that earlier. We'll go to a higher one. Is this one? Oh, God, no. All right, we're not going to do this one. This was one of the ones. Here's another problem I have with the game. Sometimes it can just be kind of tedious. If you see down here at the bottom right, we're supposed to get 620 chips. So basically, this level boils down to just running back and forth, picking up chips. Now, they do add a little bit of complication because you'll see those teeth down there. The teeth will always make a beeline for you, and they're not very smart. They also cannot go through a chip. All right, I'm going to stop getting these because it's very annoying to try to talk with it going beep, 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 beep. Oh, God. They're not very smart, so if you do stuff like this, they'll get blocked. And they get blocked by the chips. So you want to do this level in such a way uh, that you're trying to block them for as long as possible and grab the chips. Again, it was interesting to do the first time, but if I died, which luckily I didn't and had to do it again, it'd be very, very annoying to have to go through the whole thing and again. You can turn the sound off, so, which I would probably advise for this level if you had to do it a second time. But uh, again, there's, there's some pretty creative levels. Again, sometimes they can be a little bit tedious, in my opinion. Uh, especially, again, if you have to do it again. But, um, but eh, that's not actually a good one. Uh, well, it's a good one, but for the uh, reason that I won't spoil for you. Um, let's see. All right, we'll start doing this one. This will be the last one we do with Chips Challenge 1. I just want to give you kind of an idea, uh, and I don't want you to get the impression, especially because this game does look very primitive. Uh, it looks very old that the puzzles are going to be super easy and, and kitty or whatever. That's not the case. I've, I'm not that far in. I've only got like 14 puzzles done, and they started to get pretty tricky already. And I think this game has like 140-something puzzles, something like that. Uh, there's a lot to do. And there's even more in Chips Challenge. So don't think that just because these puzzles look pretty easy and I'm blowing through them. One, I've done them already, so I know what to do. Uh, and two, again, we're pretty early on. And I have been, been uh, pretty stumped sometimes. So i got to remember how to do this one. So water, you can use these bricks to push to make dirt. And then if you step on the dirt, it becomes a floor. This way, we can carefully, and I've screwed myself by pushing the bricks wrong here do this and this is a good example of a longer stage which now that i remember it which can get a bit long in the tooth and you're kind of like oh geez come on i just want the stage to end so we got the red key and keys are one use only so you see it took my key away when i did that so ice we're going to squeeze across here now we don't want to, of course push the wrong way because we'll go straight into the fire luckily i mostly remember how to do this because i ended up having to do it a few times but again, it, it definitely can be pretty tedious once you had to do it a few times. So now I just have to remember there's a special thing we have to do when we go back. Do it this way, I think. We have to go up, basically. Nope, this is just going to take us right back where we were. I thought we were going back the way we came. There's like one alternate thing we need to do. I think it's this way. Here we go, here we go. So again, one little screw up there and you go into the fire, which is not good. So this green button again switches the green blocks. I think you remember that. Uh, so we have no keys. So we look up here. Oh, sure enough, there's a blue key. So just got to be careful. All right, now the blue door is blocked. We need to hit the button. Open the blue door, get the yellow key, hit the button again so that we can get to the yellow door to get the green key, etc., etc. You get the idea. So again, you can kind of see how if you are playing this, especially the second or third time, you might get in a hurry and you might just run into one of those things. Uh, you definitely have to be very careful with that. Uh, you don't want to die and have to do that all over again. So we're going to wait. And not having checkpoints might not be a big deal for some folks, but personally, it drives me up the wall. I, I am somebody who really, really hates 
doing things more than once, uh, like doing the same thing over and over again, that frustrates me very, very quickly. I had no patience for it. Even as a kid who was a, playing my NES, I hated that kind of stuff. All right, so we just need to, no, oh, that was close. Uh, we just need to wait for the ants to get away. Well, of course we could try walking across there, but really it's not worth the risk. We need good timing there. And if I recall, I think we need to go to the left first. Because if I rem remember... Alright, so that one was pretty easy. Yeah, not really much to that one. Now, down here, I remember... And I don't remember what it is exactly, but I remember getting frustrated because I did this wrong. And I had to redo the entire level again. Uh, so I won't be, if I do it wrong this time, I won't be doing the, re the whole level again, but I just want to give you uh, an idea of, of what I'm talking about. So if we look at this, basically the only thing we can do is push here. Now the bombs at the bottom obviously touch, we die. So we want to hit them with the blocks. So obviously get this one down here. And we need all of these dirt bricks. So no choice here but to push. We can only push one block at a time. No choice here but to push this. Still no choice. Oh, wait, no, we do have a choice. But you can push this up. Which we need to do. I'm trying to remember, I might have screwed it up already. Because we would need to push this all the way over. Yeah, I might have messed it up already, even though I'm not quite sure how I managed that. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Here we go. Not thinking. Here we go. I don't know why I was not thinking I could just use this brick. Or this dirt, whatever. So now we want to move this down. Or grab this chip. Move this over. And sometimes, again, sometimes you kind of get in a hurry because you're like, oh yeah, yeah. And you do that and you make one little wrong push. And it screws the entire thing up. So we managed to not do that this time, though. So we still want to be careful here not to touch those bombs. All right, so now we have them all. There was one chip under the rock or the dirt, whatever. So now I think the I think the door was up here. Wasn't it? Yes. Ah, uh, now this is tricky. I actually died to this, I think, the first time, uh, and we might die again. But uh, yeah. Let's see, how is the best way to do this? Because as soon as we do th hit this, that opens the trap, and this thing's gonna go flying. So we want to... We need to push this brick down on it. That's not gonna work. Actually, yes it will. There we go, all right. So yeah, again, as you can see, if you get to the end and die, again, you have to do the entire stage again. Some folks might not have a problem with that. Again, that drives me up the wall. Uh, and it's very, very frustrating to me uh, at times, uh, which I mean all the time. So that's Chips Challenge 1. Let's take a quick break here, and I'm going to get over to Chips Challenge 2. All right, here we are in Chips Challenge 2. Let me go ahead and switch to another level. Uh, we'll... We'll skip to something else here. This is actually kind of easy. So I'll do some of these easier puzzles while we while we wait here, just so we can, so you can kind of see it's the same thing. I suppose that you can play as another character, a female character. I haven't figured out how to unlock it. Maybe it's it's just later on when you get to it that you're able to do that. I'm not really sure. But uh, anyway, it's it's the same thing, uh, roughly roughly as you can see. There are some new mechanics that are added, new monsters, new new things that you will run into. Yeah, it was a first try. And things like this is pretty interesting. Now, actually beating this level is not too difficult. However, if you're the type who wants to get a good score, beating it just isn't enough. You got to get that A+, like on Super Meat Boy. You got to get the A+, you can't just beat it. This might, uh, this will be interesting for you. As you can see, these doors have 1K bonuses. However, you also see there's a lot of these outlaws. Now, the red face outlaws take only your, they take half of your score and uh, any items you have, which in this case, it doesn't really matter. The blue one, however, he takes all your keys and half your score. So you wanna, if you wanna maximize your score here, you wanna look at how best to go through this level without 
hitting, you know, hitting as few of the various uh, bad guys as possible. Uh, I'm just going to make a, a kind of a nasty stab at it. It's not going to be pretty. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to end up losing half our points, but we get a bunch more keys over here. Let's go ahead and unlock that door. For some reason, green doors don't use your keys. I don't quite know why that is. You still have to have the key to open it, obviously. But um, at any rate, let's see how you want to do this. So I think probably the easiest way would be to hit this guy, grab this blue key. We're going to hit him, open it. It's going to steal our key, but that doesn't matter. And then we'll go up here. And you can see we lost, or we're down like 54 points. So we beat the level, but we don't have very many points, not many bonus points. So it, this definitely kind of thing could be very interesting to those, like again, who wants to try to perfect the level, to beat it with as high as points, uh, as many points as they can, which I think is cool. Uh, turtles are pretty interesting. They disappear when, or well, you can only step on them once and then they disappear. You can also only push a block over them and then they'll disappear. Now this level, again, this level is, is an easy one to beat relatively. We just need to, well, I'm going to say that and I'm going to screw it up, I'm sure. Except I think I already have, let me back out here. Oh, okay. All right, I got this one. So this one's easy to beat after I, again, I really need to stop saying that. It's easy to beat if you don't keep screwing it up like I do. However, if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see that there are flags and there's also a 1k flag over there obviously you need to get two bricks over there to be able to do it but there's only four bricks on the stage which means you need to use every single brick because you need to use two bricks just to get out you can push it on the ice there see i can leave now very easily but if i wanted to try to again maximize my score there's two times flags there as well so you want to avoid those until you've got the 1k flag Hit that, hit both of those flags and then leave to maximize your score. And I'll let you figure out how to do that because I wasn't able to. And we'll see a few more of the, the scores. This is another one of those that I found to be more kind of annoying than like interesting. Basically, these are turnstiles. These are a new mechanic in the game. They will only turn if you, like it, basically if they're making a gator jaw on you if that makes any sense and it's probably very difficult to see on youtube honestly it's even hard to to really see the direction they're facing on when i'm actually playing the game because one other thing you need to keep in mind because these uh, these games are older you can't increase the size the the windows L itself is actually quite small which you're seeing uh, on the video the youtube video I've actually got it blown up so that you can see what's going on. It's actually a pretty small window on my 1920 by 1080 uh, monitor. Uh, it's, it's not like I'm having to squint the whole time, but when it comes to small details, again, like to see which direction these turnstiles are turning, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing them. Now, my eyes aren't the greatest in the world, so a lot of folks might not have any kind of issue with it, but it's something to keep in mind. So while I'm kind of stumbling through this, and honestly, I, I'm doing this puzzle now like I did it last time pretty much, I'm just kind of like slamming into it until I do it or just get tired of it and move on to the next day or next puzzle. But uh, very quickly, I wanted to talk about the story of Chips Challenge. It's kind of interesting slash inspiring. Oh, did I lock myself off? Oh, there's a bunch of chips there anyway. Um, it's interesting and kind of inspiring. Basically, what happened was, as I mentioned, Chips Challenge came out. It was, I think it was a free game on Windows 3.1, I think. And... It was popular, so the guy made the second game. Well, I guess right at the last second, whoever his publisher or whoever it was was going to be pulled the rug out and said, hey, you know what? You're going to have to pay for distribution and all this other stuff. And it was a lot of money that he didn't have. So Chip Challenge 2 never happened. Well, I guess a couple years ago, my understanding is that he decided, you know what, I really want this to happen. So he started working with a publisher who still had the rights, the publishing rights to Chips Challenge 2, or Chips Challenge, I guess, period, to see if he could get it to happen. And I guess it took about two years of negotiations, which seems really crazy to me that, like, who, who, you know, again, I don't know what happened in the background, so, you know, I shouldn't pass judgment. But seriously, like, why were they holding on to a game 
that is literally t about 20 years old uh, that was like a, a free or an inexpensive game on Windows 3.1. Uh, I don't understand why they gave this person such a hard time, but again, I don't know the details. I'm just going to walk right into that water because that just makes the most sense to me. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to play this map just because it shows you some of the new mechanics. Uh, this is kind of just thin purple walls. It's not really a major mechanic or it needs to be explained. It's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, you can't walk through the walls. Imagine that. Uh, and this is these question marks just kind of tell you how the enemies behave and I think that's kind of cool that the enemies behave in specific ways like the ants hit a wall and will always try to go left I believe and the centipedes will always try to go right so it's kind of cool that they go, they behave similarly but slightly differently and you have these guys who will uh, like fl can fly over water I think they're immune to fire too no no I think they get killed by fire and then these enemies are immune to fire uh, but probably water and stuff will kill them and again they tend to go at a specific way uh, i'm gonna try to talk and not get hit by this but at any rate after you know after the two years he was able to secure the rights for the game and we now have chips challenge 2 and you know even reading it kind of very briefly perusing the steam reviews i saw a couple people mention like oh man i love you know chips challenge back in the day and i was so glad to see it you know chips challenge 2 finally getting made so there are those folks out there who you know do have good fond feelings of playing this game which is great and many of you probably have already bought this game uh, or both but it is back and again it's it's Again, if you like puzzle games and are okay with, again, kind of having to redo things over again, uh, sometimes, yeah, it's, and I'm not, it's not like it's, oh God, 15 minutes of time was spent getting back to where I was. It's not like that, but because a lot of it is running and doing kind of minute little tasks, it can feel a long time. Uh, and that personally, it kind of gets under my skin a little bit. Now, this mechanic is kind of interesting. Whenever you hit this button, it switches green chips and bombs. Obviously, green bombs are bad. Any color bombs are bad. Uh, so you want to do this so that you grab the chips. Because we need all of the chips. And this mechanic as does get used to interesting effect. Uh, I'm definitely going to show you at least one level that uses this to very interesting effect. Later on... All right, so now we can push these. Now, I, I screwed myself last time on this because I didn't look down here. All right, so I think we push these down. Now, ice blocks are different. They make a, a path, but they do not... Um, you can push multiples in a row, as you can see. Oh, okay. I think... Hmm. Let's try this. Oh, no, okay. I think I'm overthinking this. Yeah, I think I am. I thought for some reason when I pushed them, they were going to, like, fly across the room. I don't know why. Let's grab this one. Yeah, last time I did this, I just, um, I just pushed them all across. I don't know if you can... Uh-oh, you know what? I'm, now I might... Nope, now... I screwed me up. That, and see, that's kind of what I'm talking about. I made one small little mishap, and it's game over. Because I can't get across now. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Yeah. There we go. Alright. So no big deal. Now, this again, this is an easier stage, though. Later on, I definitely have made, like, one small mishap. It screwed the whole level up, and I had to, like, redo... A couple minutes of play so that's again if that's gonna be something that might get on might annoy you it might be something worth considering so as you can see the ice block put out the fire but then it makes a water hole so we need to cover it up with the dirt and again keep in mind we're very early on uh, at this point this is like the fourth stage or something like that where they're still teaching you kind of the new mechanics so things definitely pick up and I will show you some of the more uh, complicated stages here in a bit. Now again, here's the ma mouths. So what we want to do, we want to trick him into going to the, into the dead end. And there we go. That'll give us a little breathing room. We grab this and get out. 
and get out. These, I like this note. It just says, yeah, sometimes we change the floor to look different because we just want it to look different, which I thought was pretty amusing. So we're going to grab this. And keep in mind, if you ever get stuck on a level, you can skip it and move on to the next one and maybe come back to it later uh, to, to get the score. This is one of those that I get what they were going for, but because I tend to be impatient, it kind of gets on my nerves. Now you might say, oh, there's not really much going on here. Just walking around grabbing random chips. Well, there's a little bit of a trick. And I do like that they made it so you can see this. If you look very closely under that, you'll see there's a button. And when I hit that, all the traps unlock. Or all the green blocks go down, letting everything out. So either A, you want to leave that for last. Or if you double back over it real quick, you'll trap them in the blocks and you can safely get all the other chips without a problem. Let's go ahead and skip to a more far level. Uh, I, I, let me find this one This one level I thought was kind of cool. Uh, the runaround. This one's actually pretty amusing. Uh, kind of like when you start to see what's going on, it goes like, oh crap. Uh, you got all these teeth chasing after you. Now, I'm not going to show you to beat this one because I want you to figure it out yourself. But it, it's kind of a cool one because at first you see a few teeth and you're like, oh, I just need to dodge those. And you see more and more and more and it's like, oh no. Uh, I, I like that one uh, quite a bit actually. Uh, we're going to skip one more level to watch your step. Now this one is what I was talking about before where it's an interesting combination uh, use of that green button that again, remember, switches your... Uh, it switches the bombs with chips and chips with bombs. And also remember, we've got the turtles here. Now at first I was thinking, oh, this is an easy one. So I just, you know, grab this. Actually, I messed it up. So I was like, oh, okay, just grab this. Go over here. Go over here. It's like, oh, that's a pretty easy stage so far. Until you get to this point. Then it's like, oh, wait a minute. We still have a bomb. And I can't get back to any of the green buttons to flip them. And you can't go diagonal. As much as I would like to, you cannot go diagonal. This one I have not quite beat yet. Uh, I tried going different ways, like saying, okay, maybe if I, you know, maybe go around and get the green chips first. And then just hit the switch once. But you can see we're already kind of causing a problem. Because when we go to get these, uh-oh, we're stuck on this little island. So not only can you not cut off your path to the chips, you can't cut off your own path to the exit. And we'll just uh, kind of semi-blindly try to do this like once or two more times. I'm going to try to grab these far ones first. I don't really know why I hit that. I don't know if that was necessary. Let's go at this from this angle. Hey, there we go. <laughs> I actually did get it. Nice. But again, as you can see, it definitely starts to pick up a bit. Ah, uh, there must be turtles under here. Uh, the, the challenge does pick up a bit. Oh, I can see what you're going for here. Let's see. Ah, uh, okay, I see. So we have to be a very specific path because obviously we can't go this way. Oh, wow, 355 chips we have to get here. Obviously, I won't be solving this one. This will be up to you. This It is up to you to, to uh, solve Chip's challenge on this. I haven't messed with the multiplayer at all, just FYI. Uh, I don't really, I usually don't uh, just, but it's cool that it's there. I don't really know how it works. I don't, to, I would presume the maps are different. There's gonna be like different ones. Also, I, from what I can tell, you obviously can make your own levels and download other people's levels. It doesn't have Steam Workshops integrated, so it's not quite as easy as just, you know, as, as it normally would be with something like Steam Workshop. But, you know, it is there. Again, I, I don't know if they have like a dedicated website where you can go to grab them or what. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I was trying to show you stuff while I'm doing it, but hearing it beep, 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 beep in my ear is going to drive me insane. But at any rate, that's Chips Challenge 1 and 2. Again, you can get them both in a bundle for $4.99. Uh, this game actually has two, like 200 levels in it. So I think there's like over 350-ish levels combined. And you know, obviously beginning stuff is pretty easy, 
but there's some pretty interesting use of their mechanics and some uh, you know some ones that are going to make you think a little bit later on. I can already tell again. I feel like I'm just starting the game, and it's just starting to get difficult. I'm on stage like 15 or so. So I've only got 185-ish levels left. So if you like these kind of, you know, more si uh, simple presentation, but maybe not simple to beat puzzles, and maybe a little bit nostalgic about the old school uh, type of uh, uh, games, I would definitely check this out, especially for $5 for both games. If you like puzzle games, I think you're easily going to get your money's worth out of it. But anyway, thank you guys for checking out these videos. If you'd like to see more games that you might not have heard of, make sure to follow me here on YouTube. You should also follow me on Twitter. Also, make sure to leave comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of these videos or if you've played these games, especially if you've played these games on Windows 3.1. I definitely want to hear from you because I want to know how in the heck I missed this being a big gaming nerd. And that was kind of the start of my big PC gaming. How did I miss this? I knew about Solitaire and Minesweeper. How did I miss Chip's Challenge? What happened there? Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.